Pan-African Network for Laboratory Animal Sciences and Ethics. Uh, this is presented by Dr. Josiah Kantiok. Uh, uh, he is an executive director of John Veterinary Network and deputy registrar of Veterinary Council of Nigeria. May you join me in applauding as he comes to the podium. Why they work on the slides. Uh, we want to welcome everyone to this conference. And uh, uh, I want to thank the organizers for giving the opportunity to be here to make this presentation. Most importantly, I want to thank AU Iba who facilitated my, my trip to come here. Like has been mentioned, I'm speaking on this topic which is under the sub-team. We all know what the, the team of the conference is. I'm speaking on the sub-team, which we're here for, technology, education, innovation, and research. And go to the third slide. Building human capacity. Go to the third slide now. We are building human capacity in research, animal sciences, welfare, and ethics across Africa. Um, an African network with laboratory, animal science, and ethics. I want to mention that the names that are here are all part of the network. And uh, it's made up of lecturers, researchers, and those who are stakeholders in their various countries in Africa. We are representative of um, University of Leeds here, Dave Lewis. We have somebody from New Zealand. We have somebody from uh, Switzerland. Let me take it down. Batmo is from South Africa. Kwachi Solem is from Tunisia. Abu Samad is from Nigeria. Hamsi Ufori is from South Africa. Ingala Jilani is from Morgan. Isha from Uganda. Francis Fokoya from Nigeria. Kadiga Gafar from Egypt. This is uh, persons that form the Pan African Network. The Pan African Network is made up and lecturers and researchers who are sciences who are in experiment. My name is Dr. Josiah Kanter, as I said today as a presenter. Uh, I am a chief in my country, chief of the park. And as of today, I'm in Nigeria and a member of Panlasi and my head group. We know that most times and the past conferences, we have talked more about working and farm animals. There's a little bit of change here that we're trying to promote. This paper seeks to mention and highlight the need for animal welfare implementation in research animals, or rather in animals used in research. How many of us observe animal welfare principles, guidelines in research animals? Research animals, most people will say are laboratory animals like rabbits, mice, and all what not. But I assure you that even the cattle, the sheep, the goat you use for research is also like a lab animal. Animal and take to the lab and life. And because you are using it for research, it's also taking to be a lab animal, uh, taking to be a laboratory animal. A preamble I have the slides I have there are so many, but I just want to talk to the slides and see how we go. First of all, we need to talk about what we have achieved in the area of research, what research has brought to, to, to humans, to humanity. And if you go to the next slide. Okay, you are there. You can see it says the greatest impact have evolved from scientific and biomedical research. With the, use, the greatest impact have evolved. That is when we talk about research. And greatest are from as evolved from scientific and biomedical research with the use of animals. These animals are used in scientific, medical, and veterinary research to do some of these benefits. We investigate, test new drugs, 
test new surgical techniques, carry out toxicity studies, cosmetic research, and co benefits that accrue from such include development of new drugs and vaccines, development of successful transplant procedures, and major medical advances are carried out based on research that is carried out scientifically and biomedically. Animal welfare has become a critical and important subject in the use of animals in research, not only for sustainability and livability, but also for development. The development of animal welfare strategies and principles for animal use and study became necessary to ensure the main treatment of animals. And we know about uh, William Rizum and Rex Bott, who wrote a book on the principles of human experiment techniques, which involves three R's. Some of us are researchers know what three R's are, replacement, reduction, and refinement. These are basically principles that are used to entrench animal welfare in research. In animals. What does replacement mean? We know replacement is if you can have a replacement not to use an animal for research, you go ahead and use that replacement in order to avoid using an animal. Reduction talks about the number of animals that are used in research. If you must use animals for research, then you must use, try and figure out how to use the minimum number of animals that you use for research. And the refinement involves reducing hazards to the animal. That's why sometimes when you do research, whatever you will do to reduce the pain that the animal will go through, maybe that's why sometimes you give an adjustment to animals and whatever, like when you do surgical tests. Animal welfare and scientific research. The three hours principle is basically what is used to entrench animal welfare in research. And like I mentioned, the use of animal ethics committee or instead of animal ethics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. The use of animal ethics committees is very important. Those are committees that are used to entrench ethical practices in research. The animal ethics committee or ICOP are the ones that will involve monitor that are normally normally will involve or will approve whatever procedures. And monitor whatever has been done to ensure that ethics are followed in whatever research that has been carried out. Legislations are part of it. If there are legislations that help to entrench this, it will help to ensure that the right things are done. And my welfare standards in research, I would not want to dwell more on that. Somebody, the OIE man, spoke earlier on during the opening ceremony. Animal standards in research is basically the work of OIE, which has been done. You can scroll to the next slide. Go ahead. Go ahead. All are part of OI, just talking about standards. Go ahead. Yeah, establishment of PANLAC. I want us to look at establishment of PANLAC. Okay, sorry. Go back. Background formation of PANLAC. Like I said, PANLAC is an African team. That is the number four background to formation of PANLAC. Okay. Yes, I was slight. The seven round. Okay. Yeah. Okay, let me go ahead. Uh, is number four in the items in the slide the presentation. Background to formation of panlase. Panlase in Africa, animals are commonly used for scientific and medical purposes in search of solutions to challenges in the continent. This includes prevention and treatment of diseases, like I earlier mentioned. There are no or limited opportunities available for education and training in animal welfare and laboratory animal science. If you look at Africa, laboratory animal science is working with research animals and entrenching ethics is virtually a new thing. More so if you look at the challenges in Africa and the difficulties that we have, there is need for us to begin to see how we entrench this animal welfare ethics. 
And if you, one of the greatest challenges we have is the fact that most times researchers from Africa, when you submit papers for publications, you end up with your papers not accepted because they have not passed through animal ethics committees where ethical reviews are followed. And so there is need for us to begin to look at and churches. And that is the reason why Panlasse uh, came up. Some of African countries have legislations. Yeah, that's a slide where legislation or standards, why others broadly lack standards, guidelines for care and use of animals. The next slide. In many countries and regions of Africa, political instability, corruption, disease, food insecurity, and other resource constraints are responsible for low level priority given to education and training, especially in animal welfare and identities. Recognizing the gaps and issues are both African last associations in collaboration with international associations saw the need to promote education and training in the area of research using animals. You created a committee of practice to promote standards for care and use of these animals. Some of the associations in Africa that we have, some countries in Africa that be able to embrace and start that are South Africa Association of Laboratory Animal Science. We have the Tunisia Association of Laboratory Animal Science, Animal Care and Use Research in Nigeria, International, and then we have West African Laboratory Animal Science. The International National Institution Council Laboratory Animal is one of the major international supporters of the Panlasi and some of the regional communities that they have in Africa. Through the intervention of these associations, that's like in, in Africa, together with the International Council for Laboratory Animal Science, Panlasi came up to see how education and training will be promoted in Africa. And since then, and let's say they actually got formed in 2017 at a meeting that was conveyed between uh, the African associations in South Africa and International Council for Laboratory Animal Science. And the team then was One Africa, One World, signifying unity among African countries and unity between Africa and the global community. Collaboration towards the common good and humanization of standards. You can see one for three delegates and 23 countries attended that COP. And that is where Panlase started up and agreed on these following objectives. Next slide. The objectives include to create accessible, sustainable African centric education and training, lifelong opportunities for all persons involved in care and use of research animals in Africa, which include scientists, animal caretakers, animal facilitators, technicians, veterinarians. Animal communities. Every single person that is in research of animals, even if you are just a man that takes care of the facility, you need to be part of this training. All with the need for you to understand what it means to entrench animal welfare in research. It establishes and enhances sound ethical. To establish and enhance the protocol the reasons and the priorities, to establish and enhance sound ethical review and approval systems for, for the animals and use of, for, for, for use of animals. Also, to support and promote development of appropriate governance, which is very key. Empower the African research community to be better equipped to undertake world class research so that researchers that will come up from Africa will now be part of world class researchers haven't gone through animal ethics communities that are normally required by international publishers and editors to ensure that a research paper is accepted. Panlase carried out a lot of collaborative and pan African uh, uh, education activities and partnerships. Even though we know fund is actually a problem, but Panlase has been able to work with some organizations who have supported the education and training that we have had from 2017 to 2022. Some of these institutions include the University of Leeds, United Kingdom Research and Innovation, Higher Education Funding Council for England, Biotechnology and Biological Sciences Research Council. Panlase is in, collab in collaborative partnership with local association, institutional regulatory bodies, animal welfare organizations, co-created and co-delivered educational activities in several African countries. This includes Egypt, Kenya, Nigeria, the IBA, Go to the next slide. Yeah. 
Yeah. This is a table showing activities of Panasi. It's showing the total number of education activities that have been carried out, total number of these that is involved in the various countries, and the educational approach, whether the total number of participants also. So far, 3,367 persons. And like I mentioned, most of the education and training activities of Panasi involves training the trainer, and then they will cascade this training among other institutions and other um, persons involved in research. 3,367 persons have been trained so far from 2017 to 2022. And the table here shows the total number of days and uh, countries that are involved. Next table. This table shows total number of analyze education and training activities in the years since we started. Total number of Africans involved are other participants that are non-African. That's what the table is showing. And then the total number of both African participants and total number of other participants. The number of African participants is 2,260. Total number of other participants, like I mentioned, from other developed nations and other countries, 107. Looking at the analysis of which, to the next slide, too. Yeah, this seeks to mention from the different groups that are involved in research or stakeholders in research. Researchers, veterinarians, animal welfare, ICOP members, and, and co. And also look at the distribution from those that have been involved and trained. 70 percent may that should be 30 percent for the female. That's the mystery. That should be 30 percent. Guidelines for the establishment and functioning of animal ethics committee. Like we earlier mentioned, one of the reasons why in Africa we have not been able to get our societies accepted because of ethical review. And let's say in 2019, sat down, called a number of experts about 32, sat down and seek to develop this document. Guidelines for the Establishment and Functioning of Animal Ethics Committees, or ICOC, in Africa. And this was done and is to be cascaded, to be implemented, so that all institutions, all stakeholders, institutions, universities in the different countries in Africa will be able to adopt this. So that in no distant future, because we know animals used for research should be in their best state of health to be able to give meaningful results. And we know that animals used to solve problems of diseases should not be used when they are not giving their best. And so if we are able to use entrenched animal ethics, animal welfare in our research animals, I think we'll get a lot of results, good results, world-class results that will be used everywhere in the world. And our researchers will be accepted. And then we'll be able to solve some key and issues and problems related to our region. These laws were made, these guidelines were made based on the following. One, existing legal framework, standards and policies related to care and use of animals for scientific purposes in Africa. The cultural, religious, political, social, economic diversity in Africa. References to relevant aspects of international recommendations. Like I mentioned, most of the work of Panlase is done together with international organizations that are involved, who have been involved in the training and education of uh, animal um, ethics committees and all those involved in laboratory animal scientists. Go to the next slide, let's go to challenges. Yeah. One of the challenges that we have and have encountered through the years we have started, 2017 to now, is lack of African-led, African-centric educational resources, lack of priority to animal welfare, and research animal sciences related education and training. We are quite aware in Africa, what percentage goes to education of the budgets of countries. In my country, sad to say, our lecturers just say, our university lecturers just came back from strike because they are working on seeing how funding will be improved in the universities. And 
Those are a lot of challenges that affect animal welfare, not affect education in the country, not to talk of animal welfare. I mean, you look at the education in totality before you even come back to look at it for the aspect of animals. Funding and sustainability is one thing that is a challenge. With governance frameworks, even when we have these guidelines, what do we do to ensure that government buys it? As much as you have a guideline, if it is not backed by law, if it is not backed by the government, you could try to see that you enforce it, but you cannot achieve good success without the backing of government. We also have Africa being a vast continent, resource constraints with significant distances between institutions, travel challenges, and attitudes, uh, awareness and attitudes and behaviors in our different African settings, differences in culture, language, and religion, information technology, different stages in journey and development. Because as it is now, like I earlier mentioned, Bangladesh have been able to work and they work in seven countries. We have over 45, almost 50 countries, more than 54 countries in Africa that are supposed to be part of this. Only seven that will be able to work with. Positive results are output. You need to know what we have done so far, what we have experienced, what has happened. Many trainers are trained in laboratory animal science and ethics to continue with training in indigenous professionals. Like I said, it's trained the trainers that we do. In most of the seven countries that we are working, the post train are already cascading and working on others. Facilitating the introduction of those rules ethical review process <coughs> in research animals. In my country, quite some universities, since we did these guidelines have been shared, a lot have started entrenching the use of animal ethics committees. And I know some of the countries that, that were here, that we have worked with, a lot have even started implementing, also using the animal ethics committees. So it is a positive for us. Global recognition and acceptance of outcomes of research from Africa for publication for those institutions where the chances has worked and have gotten their researches sent out because they have animal ethics committee and because they be able to follow the minimum standards to ensure animal welfare is entrenched their researches. These papers have been accepted. We are beginning to get people getting their papers accepted by international publications and, and publishers. The challenges and successes and the lessons learned from Panda journey are applicable to other low and middle income countries across the world, seeking to enhance animal welfare and ethics in their own country or region. This is just to say whatever we're doing is not too different from whatever elsewhere in the world to see such. And we're beginning to get results for it. The way forward. So far, Palace have successfully created and delivered a portfolio of educational opportunities for African countries. In those countries, there is Wider community of police equipped with knowledge, expertise, and educational resources. Move on. There is, however, gaps in provision to other countries across the continent, like I mentioned. Seven out of 54 is well far away. The way forward to fill these gaps expanding provision, stakeholders, regions, lifelong learning. Like I mentioned, I said partnership and collaboration with AUEVA. AUEVA is the regional body for Africa. AUEVA is implementing also. <coughs> we are here today to beckon on AUEVA. Like I earlier mentioned, whatever you do without the governance support, there's nothing you can do. If there is no buy-in from members of African, uh, African countries, there's nothing you can do. So we are calling on AUEVA to collaborate, to be in partnership with AUEVA, we can be part of the APA to see how we can work on this, to see how this will be cascaded and taken to the council so that AU will make it part of the resolution for member countries in AU. And this will help us be able to cascade and improve whatever we are doing. Also, entrench ethical review processes, the guidelines that we have mentioned that is, has been made, see how every country will begin to use that. 
And then we work to co-creation of sustainable predominantly online blended Africa-centric education training and lifelong training opportunities all over. We need to increase the stable partnership. And that's why we're here today. As many as will be part of whatever we're doing, we can work together. Building national regional approval and implementation of partnership with relevant professional bodies, statutory regulatory bodies, institutions, and government agencies. <coughs> These are people that will help us. If everybody buys into this, Africa will not be what it will be. Africa will not be what it is as it is now. We will have gone further beyond what we are. And many will come to be part of whatever we are doing. And then we will need to design sustainability and growth. And then formalization of one network and association. This is our presentation. I want to appreciate everyone for being here. I know we don't have to, and that's why we're moving and pushing to see how we we'll end this. All partners that have worked with us, participants that are here, institutions that have been part of us, professional regulatory and statutory bodies that have worked with us, critical friends, funders, AU Urban, which is key, and now who are given us a platform to be here, and everyone that is here as AAWC participants. We want to appreciate and thank you. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you, Dr. Gis. It was it's a little bit difficult to stop. For two reasons, the way you have Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, uh, so, uh, 